And I th think we are live. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I hope er everything is correct. Um, okay, yeah, I think we're we're live. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is my. Let's do a little bit of an introduction first, um, because I'm quite new. I um, I'm international master Max Wormdom from the Netherlands, uh, so a Dutch player. Um, I'm 20 years old, so uh, still <laughs> not old, but quite young actually still. And I've recently signed up with Coaches, and this is my first ever Coaches stream. Some stuff might still go wrong, I hope it doesn't, but I'm quite new to this, so I uh, hope uh, I'll not make too many mistakes. And um, today's session is about undefended pieces. The topic might seem very simple um, because uh, if a piece is undefended, you might be able to take it. But I wanted to complicate uh, matters a bit more by giving a little bit more uh, difficult exercises. Um, so what you will often see in high level games is that many pieces will not be undefended so what actually you will see very often like very good blitz or rapid players are very often the players who keep their pieces defended so for example uh, a great example i think is vladislav artemia um, he's a great rapid and blitz player and basically kind of his strategy is just to keep everything defended and uh, stay solid and at some point he's gonna get a chance and because his opponent might not be uh, have it or not have everything defended um, he might at some point make a mistake while his own pieces are defended so his opponent won't have any tactical shots um, another example of this is actually Magnus Carlsen the world champion uh, who also does this very often um, but first a uh, question to the chat uh, I wanted to know if you recognize this position, I'm not sure uh, people already tuned in. Uh, so maybe uh, drop a quick hello first in chat or something. Um, but um, it will be it will be nice if you already recognize it. And otherwise, uh, you have not already seen the finish of this game. So it doesn't matter too much anyway. Um, so yeah, just drop, drop a quick hello. Hi, uh, welcome Safan Happy. welcome. Um, I'm not sure if you already know the position, but um, this was actually a game between Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, so very, very strong players. And this was actually from a very recent game as well. This was the final game for Magnus at the Lindor's Abbey Rapid. Um, tournament of the Chesney 4 Tour and uh, this was an Armageddon game to decide who goes on to the uh, finals of this tournament as you might already know uh, Magnus did not win this game but he was white and not only did he uh, not need to lose but he also needed to win it wasn't Armageddon he had white so he needed to win the game and uh, this position there's not too much material left on the board so uh, what Magnus thought he needed to do is try to steer up the position just to create some chances. Um, what is likely to happen in this kind of position is that the B2 pawn is going to fall at some point. Then the C6 pawn is going to fall. And um, yeah, what, what can very easily happen is that you will get only three pawns on the king side and not too much material left on the board and it will end up in a draw. So what Magnus uh, tried in the game was bishop f7. Uh, attacking the rook and after rook f8 uh, he played rook c4 he's basically going after the undefended pieces in uh, Nakamura's position so the b4 knight and the a4 knight and also what uh, Magnus is hoping for is uh, some chances against the black king because um, the black king has no escape squares on the 7th rank due to the pawn on h7 due to the pawn on g7 uh, the only escape, escape square it has is the g8 square. So what will happen is that if Magnus somehow manages to uh, get a, let's say, a check, 
on the eighth rank, it might just be uh, checkmate. But uh, we're not there yet. But that's why he doesn't mind giving up uh, the f7 bishop. If the rook moves from f8, there might be some chances. Um, however, uh, Nakamura just takes the bishop. And um, Magnus, as intended, took the knight. And this turned out to be a blunder. And I'm not sure if uh, somebody in chat already has seen uh, why this is a blunder. Um, so for first exercise for today, it's a it's a, it's um it should be kind of an easy one I think, um, but the funny thing is that Magnus Carlsen, the world champion himself, uh, missed the move, so uh, you might you might be yeah <laughs> you have seen a better move than Magnus Carlsen did in this position, and it's already mentioned in chat uh, by Rocky, uh, Queen E one. Check with a double attack on the king. And, oh, sorry for that. Uh, with a double attack on the king and on the rook. And suddenly, Magnus is just going to lose the rook. He moved the king out because he had to. And after uh, queen takes b4, he's just done a full rook. He's, he still tried queen takes e6. He was hoping for some back rank tricks. Oh, sorry for that. Um, but Hikaru just simply played rook of eight. After which Magnus is just down a full rook, and um, he had to resign the game, meaning that Hikaru uh, went on to the finals of the Lindors at BU Rapid. Um, so even at the highest level, uh, people blunder pieces, and that's that's because they sometimes keep them undefended. Um, so uh, in this position, uh, instead of rook before Magnus still could have actually hold this game maybe there are actually a couple of moves here but i'm wondering if someone in chat sees one uh it's not such an easy position i think but we should be trying to combine uh a few elements that i mentioned before we should be trying to combine the um the back rank problems so basically uh black has some problems on the back rank sometimes and also that the knights on f4 uh oh, sorry b4 and a4 are undefended uh, so we need to combine those ideas. And another piece that is undefended in this position is the rook on f7. So a couple of ideas, but we need to combine them. Uh, yeah, so one of the moves um, in this position for white is rook e4. Um, but black seems to be able to defend everything after queen b8. It's a, uh, the position is still okay for white actually here. But you need to find a, a difficult move here to try and save the position. So rook e4 was a solution, but um, you need to find another good move if you want to help or save the position for white. Because we're still down a piece, so we need a very good move here. Rook takes e6. Queen f4. Uh, Rack is really on fire here. Queen f4, very strong move. Um, combining a threat on the queen. Oh, sorry for that arrow. Um, combining this. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't intend on doing it. Uh, this threat on the queen and uh, the threat on the fourth rank. So we are increasing the pressure on the diagonal and on the fourth rank. And it's very difficult to keep it together. Um, the best move for black is probably to take the queen. And had oh sorry, <laughs> especially not that move is actually the best move. And that's a very bad move. Um, this is why you play queen f4 because now uh, black simply gets checkmated on e8. Um, what black needed to do was rook f8, then go for the end game in this way. Rook takes b4, queen f4, and basically there is not much left on the board, especially after knight b2. So the problem for Magnus was if he tried to save the game in such a way. It will very often just lead to a draw, actually. So um, probably Magnus wouldn't have won the Armageddon anyway. But uh, rook takes b4 in this position is definitely not the way to go. Uh, because it just simply drops a rook. Due to queen e1, as we've already seen. Um, I thought it was funny that still, even on the highest level, uh, they still make such mistakes. Uh, but let's move on to the next position. Um, a game... Um, number two. 
which has to do actually with the theme of the previous position, but this is a little bit harder. Um, so um, what I, I very often do when I need to calculate and what I would recommend you doing um, is in a position where you have to calculate, you need to consider candidate moves. So moves that you might be able to play uh, in this position or maybe on the next move, um, just ideas. And um, what I would very often do is first look at the targets in the position for us. So pieces that we can attack, pieces that we can target for us and we can use in our tactics and calculation. So what I would uh, t highlight in this position is definitely the rook on a7, which is an undefended piece. And also the knight on f6 because it's already attacked. And what I would always highlight is the king because the king is a very vulnerable piece and um, can very easily be attacked. And if it gets checked, it always has to move away. So it's not really, uh, it's, it's definitely a target in every single position. Um, so if we highlight the pieces in this position, we should already uh, kind of know where we should be heading towards. We need to use these three pieces uh, to win something basically. And it's already being mentioned in chat, the solution of the um, position. So what, what happens in this position is we can take on f6, luring the king to f6, and then go queen f2 check with a double attack on the king and the rook. Because they're both, or well, the rook is undefended, the king is also undefended, but it's kind of different case for the king. Um, because the king definitely has to move. It's in check, it's not undefended. Um, and okay, the king has to move away to some square after which we simply take the rook on a7. So um, we saw the rook on a7, but we had to make use of it somehow. We could also start with queen f2, but then black simply takes the rook on e6. Uh, we can take on a7, but it's equal material. So we could play queen f2, but um, you know, uh, it doesn't really win any material for white. So we first take on f6, um, to lure the king to f6 and then we go queen f2 check with a double attack uh, Good question in chat. So how to avoid such mistakes? Should we always keep the pieces defended? Well, the thing is um, You do not always need to defend them, but in general you should try to so for example um, one king that you should be Not really defending but keep safe at least it's always the king as you can see in this position and in the previous game by Magnus, we saw that the king is a very um, important piece and if it gets attacked, it's always very awkward. Um, so for example, as you will see Magnus Carlsen doing, I, I heard Nakamura saying this himself after one of the recent matches, is that Carlsen during the opening especially, he takes, uh, more time than usual to uh, get his king to safety. So um, usually he spent like developing moves, but one of the things that Carlsen always does first is get his king to safety. Mainly this is casting to either side, but um, it's definitely one of those strategies that these top grandmasters keep in mind when playing, just to keep everything safe, basically. Um, you do not always need to keep every single piece defended, but especially the ones that can become vulnerable. So um, we already saw in this position that also queen f2 was an idea and that is because the rook on a7 is undefended. Um, we do not, for example, need to keep the h7 pawn uh, defended because it's not really an uh, easy thing to attack for white. So we should not really uh, be careful with the h7 pawn, but we should be careful with the a7 rook because it's in quite an open field and it can easily get attacked on this diagonal. So keep the pieces defended that uh, can become vulnerable, I would say. And you should always keep this in mind. What uh, not only are my targets in the opponent's position, but also in my own position. So if I were black, um, I would keep in mind, okay, the rook on a7 is a target. So I should probably do something about it before it goes wrong in any way. Um, let's move on to the next position. Um, 
Oh, sorry for that. Uh, I wanted to go to this position. Um, I start with a few easy ones. Um, gets a little bit more difficult later on uh, in today's session. Um, so basically, we have this position in which um, it's wide to move. And there are, again, we should be looking at targets in the position. Um, so one of the targets in the position is definitely the G4 knight. It's already being attacked by the, by the queen. So it's definitely already a target in the position that we should be highlighting. Um, another target is definitely the D7 bishop uh, because it can be targeted with the pawn. And I would say also the queen because it's quite quite vulnerable. It's outside of its position, so maybe you can attack it at some point. And the king is still in the center, so we should also highlight the king. So we already got our targets, and now we should be trying to combine them. I've already seen in chat a couple of you find the uh, found the solution. Um, so one of the things is uh, we just simply play the move e6. And we basically cut off the diagonal for the bishop. So when you have undefended or defended pieces, actually, you can make them undefended. And there are a lot of ways to do this. Um, one of the ways is basically by cutting off their defender. Uh, there are a couple of other ways. You could, for example, be pinning uh, a piece that is defending the bishop. So for example, if we have this position, um, let's say the c6 pawn would be gone. Um, maybe we could like, okay, in a very hypothetical position, um, let's say we have a light square bishop, we move it to the a4 square, pinning this bishop, and suddenly the knight will be undefended because the bishop would be pinned on this diagonal, so it cannot protect this knight anymore. So there are a couple of ways um, in which you can basically get rid of the defenders of a piece. So we have defended pieces, which we can make undefended. And yeah, it's good that uh, it's been pointed out. The move e6 is the move here, not only because it cuts off the bishop, but also because after bishop, oh, sorry for that. After bishop takes e6, um, it seems like the knight is still defended on g4. But by the bishop, but the problem for black is that the bishop is pinned on the e file, which means that we can simply take the knight. Um, the bishop can't, uh, I cannot even make the move because bishop g4 is simply not allowed in this position. The bishop is undefended, black can, for example, castle to unpin the bishop, but we've already taken the knight, so we can just move away the queen again, let's say to f4. And now we've won a piece and are just in a winning position. After e6, should black take the pawn or save the knight? How do we decide that? Well, the thing is that um, things have already gone wrong for uh, black in the position. White is already winning after the move e6. Um, we could retreat the knight trying to save it. But the problem is that we then take the bishop. So um, not only do we cut off the defender of the g4 knight, it's also a double attack. At the moment, we're attacking d7, but we are also attacking g4, and both are undefended, and both, yeah, basically one of the two will be lost. We cannot protect both pieces in one move. So, yeah, white will just be winning a piece here. Okay, let's move on to another position. Um, I really like the next position. Uh, for some, it might still be easy. So I'm gonna wait a while before everyone finds it. This time it's black to move. So let me flip the board after you. Um, black is down in exchange. And that means that we need to take quick action. If we are still down in exchange at the end, uh, we could be in a losing position. I have to say that the bishop on g7 is very powerful. Um, it just has such a long diagonal and it really targets the king in some way. It helps the rook on the a file. Maybe we could see a queen come to this diagonal and um, maybe the bishop could be even worth an exchange at some point. Uh, let me get rid of the arrows 
uh, so I will let you guys focus. Um, in this position as well, we could do the thing uh, which I did before, where where we highlight the um, targets for us uh, in the opponent's position. But the thing is that almost every single piece in the white or the most important pieces are all targets in the white position. So in this position, we do not have any pawns uh, as targets. Sometimes pawns can definitely be targets, but here most pawns are defended and especially they're not very important. So I would not count any pawns as a target. But the thing is that um, the queen is under attack uh, by our queen. Uh, the rook is already attacked. The king is very open. It has no pawns in front of it, so it's definitely a target. And the rook is also... It's a high-value piece, so it will very often be a target anyway. It's close to the king. We have some kingside attack going on. So it will definitely become a target at some point in the future. Um, so basically, every, every piece almost in the white camp is a target, except for the pawns. Uh, we need to combine them in some way to be winning uh, the position. It will not be... I'm seeing some people actually already seen it. Um, but I really like the, the way it's been done. In the previous position, what happened was that not only did we cut off the bishop on the diagonal. Um, after bishop takes e6, if you can still remember it, um, the bishop was even pinned. So... Um, a way to get rid of a defender of a piece is always to pin it. Um, this hypothetical way of playing bishop a4, which I mentioned to pin the bishop on the diagonal, was a way. But uh, one of the ways in this position is to play rook a1. The problem for black in the position is that we cannot take the rook. We would like to win the exchange, but the problem is that uh, instead of like taking the bishop, White simply takes the queen. So um, this this cannot be done uh, taking taking the bishop because we will simply lose too much material and we'll just lose the game. Um, so instead we play the very very nice and powerful move rook a1. I really like the visuals of it um, because they're basically already down material, but we're sacrificing another rook. And the main idea is that after queen takes a1, uh, now suddenly the rook is pinned on this diagonal. So what happens is that um, the rook is not defending the queen anymore. And now all of a sudden we can take the queen. And black is now, instead of basically being up material, he was up so much material in this position. He was up uh, a rook and a bishop, but we just take a queen um, and we have a queen and bishop against two rooks, which is basically up material. And also we will be winning the rook on the next move with bishop takes b2. Actually, it's it's even mate uh, soon. Because we are threatening mate in one with queen takes b2. And the problem for white is even that after rook b1, trying to defend it, uh, queen a5 is checkmate in one. So rook b1 doesn't even help. You could play rook c2, but the problem is uh, it's an undefended piece. So uh, this is because the rook is still pinned by the bishop, which means that the rook has no defenders at all and is being attacked with the queen. So we can simply take it. This is what the uh, undefended piece is about. But um, another variation is actually after king c2. Um, because we are not able to uh, win a queen it's now defended by the king. Um, the the rook is defended by the king. The other rook is defended by the king. So why is everything protected? But um, not sure if chat already found this actually. What to do in this position? Uh, it's not so. It's not that easy. I think I actually already see the the solution to the position, which is already quite nice. Um, and yeah, that's actually a good way to put it. The pieces are overworked. So the king is defending everything, but I mean, the king is such a bad piece. It cannot do that much. It cannot handle so much stress. It's, uh, it's only one piece. It cannot defend all three of them. Um, so the way to go is to basically 
lure the way lure away the defender. So we are attacking two things in this position. Uh, one of them was already the rook on b2, which we uh, actually we are attacking three things. So we are attacking the rook on c1, we're attacking the rook on b2, and we're attacking the queen on. Oh, sorry, I want to draw an arrow. We're attacking the queen on d2. So what is happening is. Um, we are trying to lure away the defender of one of the three pieces. And this can be done by playing queen takes d2. The king is forced to take and wants its queen back. Um, he's still up in exchange. And the problem is that if we take the rook, uh, y will simply take back. And after bishop b2, it's an equal pawn in game. Um, so we have not won material yet. However, um, we can reverse the move order. So one of the things I would uh, always do when calculating a certain position is always when you have something which looks like it could be winning, but it just doesn't work, try to reverse the move order. It's one of those things that taught, was taught to me when I was uh, a bit younger and um, still new to the game was that sometimes you can just reverse the move order of your cal calculation and suddenly it works. Um, so we have this position, uh, we take the queen, uh, king takes, but we take the rook first. And now we've defended the rook on a1. And we're up a piece at the moment. Uh, so after rook takes a1, we can just take it back and we're up a piece with a winning endgame because... Um, yeah, yeah, just simply a piece up. Um, so I really like the this certain position because of the visuals with rook a1. Um, basically luring the king to a1 just to get the the rook pinned so that we can take the queen afterwards. And especially this position is also quite nice. I'm not sure, probably none of you who have really read the book, but... One of the books I read when I was trying to improve on my chess was um, My System by Aaron Nimzowicz. Um he, he was a, a very famous player, especially back in the old days. Um, this book already came out 100 years ago, so it's definitely an old book. But uh, one of the topics he talks about in the, in the book he wrote was overprotection. So... Um, the idea behind overprotection is basically just uh, protecting your pieces like four times so that you can move away one of the pieces. Here, all the pieces were only defended once. But let's say you have a bishop on c3. Um, suddenly, the queen is defended once more, the rook on b2 is defended once more. Um, suddenly, there will be no tactics. So sometimes you need to not only protect your piece once, but you need to overprotect them with like two, three, four times just to make sure you're not allowing any tactics. And uh, let's say we've got this bishop on c3. Uh, it's defending the, the queen and the rook. Uh, suddenly we were able to move away the queen because um, the bishop is already doing its job. Uh, the king is already protecting the c1 and the rook. It's, it's clear in this case actually with the um, the protection of the c1 rook because it's protected both times with the queen and the king so basically okay let's say we forget about the situation on the board we could move away the queen because it's already defended by the king so that's the idea of overprotection you're protecting your pieces once more so that the other pieces could leave if they want to um, this is called overloaded yeah yeah the king is basically overloaded it's doing too much it cannot handle it Overworked, overloaded, and overextended are used, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess most people do know Nimzowicz, yeah. It's a very famous opening in chess, so definitely the name is very well known. Uh, I'm not sure if people know much about the player, but and especially the book. But it's it's kind of a well-known book, uh, and if you have never heard of it, I recommend you to read it. Um, but let's move on to the next position. Uh, I've got a couple more positions for today's uh, session. Um, this one will be a rather easy one, actually, uh, I think. Um, this one was for white. Uh, white is a piece down. But it seems like we've got some attack going. Um, 
there there are some threats on the G file on the H file, and it doesn't actually have much to do with uh, undefended pieces, but again with the topic of overprotection. So what is happening in the position is uh, we've got some threats here on the H7 pawn with the rook on the H file lined up. We've got this uh, idea of queen G7 mates because it's protected by the pawn. And we have some threats along the g-file. So the g-file and the h-file are very important. Um, the problem is, however, that black has got everything defended. Um, like the, the queen is protecting the h7 pawn, the queen is protecting the g6 uh, square, the queen is protecting the g5 pawn, the knight is protecting the g7 square. So it seems like we have no entrance at all. And if we do not have anything concrete, white would be playing uh, the simple move Queen g6. Oh, it's white to move, but let's say we, we waste a move. Uh, we just play queen g6. The queen is now protecting everything. We do not want to exchange queens as we were in roll down. So we move the queen back. And the problem is that um, we just we are just down a piece and the attack is not really going anywhere anymore. Um, yeah, this is a simple tactic, yeah. But uh, it's nice to see that uh, even though everything is defended, you can make it undefended again, just because of overprotection. And the solution was already typed in chat. Um, Rook takes g5 uh, is the move here. Um, and what is what is just winning? The problem is that black has to take back on g5 in some way. We're right now attacking the king and the queen. Well, um, so if king h8, for example, uh, we just take the queen. Very simple. Um, so he has to take back in some way, but if we take with the knight, we can checkmate on g7, because the knight has left its duty on e6. And if we take on g5, uh, we can take on h7 instead. So a nice little tactic, uh, getting rid of the defense of black pieces. It's easy to forget actually that pawns are also very important. Very often we are talking about pieces when or when we are talking about pieces, we we're talking about knights, bishop, rooks, queens, because those are the most important pieces on the uh, on the board. But sometimes you can just take pawns as well. They're quite, sometimes quite important. Um, okay, this was a rather easy one. I wanted to do or move on to a more difficult one this time. Um, this is actually a pretty, pretty difficult one, I think. Um, I hope you'll be able to solve it though, uh, but I'll give you a little bit more time for this one because it's not that easy. Um, after this one, we will probably move on to a rather difficult one. Just stepping up the, the game a little bit. If rook takes g5, king h8, rook takes f5. Yeah, no problem, Ash, for YouTube. I uh, It's my first time for Coaches. Uh, enjoy being here. And you'll probably see me around more often than uh, than today. Um, actually, my final position will be from one of my own games. And a, ga a position where I even myself was missing, missing tactics. So it's definitely not going to be an easy one. Uh, in the final position because I, I started to miss them myself. Um, so how are you guys doing in chat? Have you found a solution already? Doesn't seem like it yet. So I'll help you out a little bit. Um, okay, so one of the things is we should be looking for undefended pieces. Um, we should start highlighting a few. So let's have a look at targets in the black position. So we first of all have this king on g8. A king is always a target, especially especially if rooks are looking towards it. Rooks is on the g file, so definitely the king is a target. And I would point out that g7 is also a target. It's only being defended by the king. Um, so it's a very loose loose piece. Uh, other uh, targets in the black position are definitely the bishop on e7 which is undefended. The rook on c8 is undefended uh, and the queen on a5 is undefended. Another piece which I would call a target in the position is the bishop on b5 because uh, it's already attacked by the knight. So we've already got many, many 
undefended pieces and targets in the black position, but we need to combine them in some way. Um, someone is suggesting queen e5 in chat. Um, the problem with the move, however, is probably that black can just play f6. And defending the the idea behind queen e5 clearly was to threaten mate on g7. But the problem is he can just uh, block it with a pawn. After which it is actually kind of difficult to create threats. So queen e5 is not the solution to this puzzle. Let's see if you can find the solution. It's a it's a difficult one, so um, definitely need to think about it a little bit. Bishop eight six. Um, it's starting it's starting g seven. The problem, however, is that black can probably just defend it in some way. Uh, there are a couple of ways. Um, Rook takes g7 is mentioned in chat. I'll probably go for just g6. Um, just making sure there's no target on g7 anymore. Now the pawn is defended by two pawns, so that's very important. It's defended by both pawns, so it's definitely not a target because it's just hard to get through on the g-file anymore. Um, probably the follow-up in the position would be to go queen e5. But um, black can solve this in two ways. Um, probably the best is to go f6 again, just blocking the diagonal again. And there will no, be no mate on g7. So that's not it either. Um, I've seen rook takes g7 mentioned in chat. Um, black is forced to take back. But uh, I do not really see a follow. The, the king seems actually kind of defended with the bishop. And very often again, we have this idea of f6. So for example, in a variation could be queen, oh, queen to g3, king to h8, and then after bishop e5 check, which seems to be almost made, we have the move f6 blocking the diagonal. And um, yeah, no way to get through. So the solution is not um, rook takes g7 either. Now knight d5 is mentioned in chat, we're, we're getting all the moves in. Um, knight d5 is also not the move. Actually, this is kind of similar to certain Sicilian type of positions. Um, for example, you know the dragon opening probably from the Sicilian, in the open Sicilian actually. And very often there, uh, knight d5 is a move, um, especially with the queen on a5. So what in, what in the dragon very often happens is there is a queen on d2 and queen on a5. And there's this tension going on on this diagonal, but, but there's this knight in between. So very often in the dragon as well, sometimes you need to consider uh, this move knight d5. However, it does not seem to work here because uh, white, or sorry, black has a very nice intermediate move. Uh, queen takes e1, check. Uh, if it weren't a check, maybe we could take on c8 and try checkmate in black, or maybe you could even take on e7 with a check a nice intermediate move as well. But the problem is that queen e1 is with a check, so we have to take it back. And um, then black can actually take on d5, taking the knight. It seems like we lose material, but we can actually take him back on e7. But first of all, we haven't won any material here so far. Um, so it's not really the solution to the position. We're trying to win material. Um, but instead, uh, we've just exchanged and also we're in a lot of trouble here if black goes rook f6, attacking the bishop and also our king is in a lot of trouble if it gets checked on the back rank. Um, so some back rank mates are luring, um, probably the bishop needs to move back so that after rook f1 it can go back to g1. The problem is that e8 is defended and we're even getting checkmated. So not only did we not win material, we are also getting checkmated. And just losing material. So um, no, knight d5 is not the way to go either. A4 seems to be kind of interesting. Well, A4 seems a bit slow to me. Um, okay, it attacks the bishop, but it gives black some time to regroup his pieces. Probably you will just move back the bishop. Um, now it's not a target anymore. It's not on b5, so it cannot be attacked. 
and uh, white has not really improved on this position and I'm not seeing the solution to the to the problem yet um, knight d5 yeah we just discussed knight d5 so sensible move might be bishop e3 it attacks the rook but it can just simply move back I would say so it doesn't doesn't add much to white's position um, maybe, maybe we could even play rook c6 just doubling on the c file and now black is getting more active we also for actually need to watch out with white in this position if we do not have something concrete uh, black does have the bishop pair um, black has more pawns around his king so eventually his king will get safer than ours ours has only has two pawns while black's king has four pawns uh, especially this bishop pair in a very open position will get active at some point so we need to be careful and um, the the solution has not been found yet. Um, or I don't think so. I didn't. Ah, now I'm seeing it. Yeah, it's been pointed out in chat. Um, Bishop c7. It's a very, very nice move. Making use of basically the targets in the position. Um, it's using the theme of double attack actually um it's luring the rook to c7 okay so the first thing is that um the rook is pinned and if black does not take the bishop we can just take on b6 next so black needs to do something and the thing is that um after rook takes c7 then we go queen e5 and we're threatening checkmate and we're threatening to win the rook and if we win the rook we win an exchange so what would be a logic move for black here is to play the move f6 for example and then we take the rook and now we're in exchange up with a winning position so it's a very nice uh move to lure the rook to c7 where it's also undefended but it's also very very vulnerable so bishop c7 is a very nice move Okay, so let's let's go to an easier one. This one was actually very difficult. Um, sorry, oh, this this should be an easy one, I think, for for most of you. One thing I would like to point out is the king is quite open with the f pawn, so you probably got to make use of that. I think it will be probably found in a couple of seconds. Um, Hasn't all been found yet, it seems like. Uh, actually, it's, I forgot to mention that it's black to move. So let me flip the board. Yeah. Oh, Duke Nigo already found it again. Hey, please reply if you can read my... <laughs> I can read your message uh, hard out. Um, so, yeah, it's already being mentioned in chat that the move for black is C4. Um, it's, this is a very easy one, especially compared to the last one. Um c4 trapping the bishop at the moment and again in this position in the starting position the bishop on d3 was well protected it was very okay not very difficult to attack as we will see with the move c4 but it doesn't seem like a target at all but we can force it to a square by playing the move c4 um after bishop takes c4 we can simply start to attack it with queen c5, with a double attack on the king and the bishop. So we're luring the bishop and it becomes basically from a defended piece to an undefended piece. Suddenly it's a target and it's trapped and we're trying to combine several teams in oh, the game of chess and uh, suddenly, suddenly we just win the bishop. So um, kind of a, oh, sorry for this, but uh, kind of a nice one, I think. You should have told Black to move earlier, sir. Yeah, I forgot to do that. I uh, I thought I had set up the position already correctly, but uh, then it turned out I forgot to mention that. 
And uh, one of probably the final positions of today, which I wanted to show you was uh, one of my own games. Um, the, the game is not too interesting. It was, uh, it was a maneuvering game. I, I black, by the way. Um, just a normal developing move or a game. As you can see, I kept everything defended. It's a very solid way of playing. But the opening stages and the middle game was not too interesting. Um, it got a little bit more interesting later on though. Because I thought uh, this moment was probably an interesting one. Um, I was seeing some targets in the, in the white camp. So let's again highlight a few tactics. Because in this position I started already calculating. It seems like... Uh, it doesn't really seem like a very forcing position, but I already started calculating in this position. Um, so what I first did was I started to look at some targets. So D3 is a target, definitely, uh, in the in the white camp, because it can easily be attacked with Knight C5. Then we've got uh, this undefended piece of B2. And if we see this Knight C5 move, we also got to see Knight takes D3. So at some point, maybe the rook and c1 can also become a target. Um, so I played the very logical move, knight c5. I wanted to get my knight to d3. He defends the pawn with knight f3, counter attacking my um, e5 pawn. The problem for him was that he couldn't really take on e5 because uh, what would happen is knight takes d3, after which um, there is a double attack. The problem for white is the the oh sorry for that the bishop on e5 is hanging and the rook is under attack. You don't really want to exchange the knight for the rook because that will win an exchange for uh, black. So uh, white is just losing material. He probably retrieves the bishop and after that we take the the rook. Um, he could maybe save himself with bishop takes e7. But it would cost him the bishop pair, so that's not great either. Black is doing slightly better here with the very powerful knight on d3. A little bit of a more active position. Um, so he didn't want to give up his bishop pair, so he played knight f3, defending the d3 pawn and attacking e5. And here, uh, let's. it's not really a tactic, but I wanted to try and see what, what you guys thought. How should we be solving the pressure on f6? It's not really um, a tactical solution, but uh, what would be logical? We're trying to maneuver our knight to d3. e4, yeah, very strong move. Or actually, uh, I played it in the game. Uh, I'm not sure if it's actually the best move, but it seemed like a very logical move. Basically, we're just trying to get the pawn or the knight to d3 and trying to protect it with the e4 pawn. Um, my opponent didn't want to give up the d3 square, so he played the move knight e5. Yeah, no problem, uh, Naziev. Um, and with the knight d3 move, he defends the d3 pawn. So if we take the pawn with knight takes d3, he can simply take it back. Um, e takes d3, queen takes d3. And we have an open position with the bishop pair for white, so... White is at least fine here, trying even, probably even fighting for the advantage. So we do not want to take there. Um, but when I went for the sequence with knight c5 followed by e4, I had something something interesting in mind. Um, I wanted to get rid of the defender of the d3 pawn. I wanted to make the d3 pawn undefended again. Um, so I was trying to get rid of the defender on e5. So I played the move bishop d6. Um, basically what my threat here is, is I'm trying to take on e5. He takes it back on e5. And then I want to play the move knight takes d3. Um, so it's a nice little sequence. I'm basically just trying to get rid of his defender. Um, bishop f6 is also a move that could have been considered. Um, I didn't do it. Um, and I'll explain to you later. Um, well, not explain to you later, but uh, the reason was that we need to, again to look at undefended pieces. So the solution or the tactical position we'll get to soon. So what happened was um, at first in, for example, especially this position, 
I had all my pieces protected. I had my bishop protected, the knight is defended, the knight is defended. Basically everything is protected and the king is very safe. So tactically I should be doing quite well if something happens. But I started overextending a little bit. Um, so he went rook c1, knight c5. Already the knight is getting be or becoming a target. It's on the c file, can very easily become a target. Then I overextended with e4. And if I play bishop f6, the problem is this pressure on the c file. He can just take on d5. And usually I want to keep this e4 pawn alive. So I would like to take back with the uh, c pawn so that after d takes e4, I can play d takes e4, eventually get the knight to d3. The problem is that uh, because the bishop is not defending the knight anymore, he can now take the uh, knight if we take back. So we want to keep our pieces defended. So this was something which I had trouble with as well in this game that I I was like trying to get so active with my pieces that they're starting to get loose. You can see in the white position that it's uh, very solid. Um, how about just f6? Yeah, you could consider f6. Um, the problem is that now the g6 pawn is undefended. So um, one of the one of the ideas for white is. Probably just to take it, and now uh, he's attacking the rook, attacking the bishop. So this is not really great either. Um, yeah, bishop d6 does target the the king side, but there is not much happening on the king side. Okay, this diagonal is open, but it's hard to get anything going on the diagonal. Um, but I play bishop d6 basically because it keeps the. Um, Knight on c5 protected, and meanwhile I want to take on e5, full by knight takes d3. He took on d5, usually when you have the bishop pair you want to open up the position. And here things start to get very messy. Um, okay, I, I could take back on d5, but the problem was that I didn't want to open up the position that much for his bishop pair. He could probably just take on e4, even opening up the position even more. And then it's very difficult to get my knight to d3 because um, e4 can get very weak without the center. I need the d5 pawn basically to protect the e4 pawn. So he can play a move like knight c4 and he just has a nice bishop pair and probably has a very nice position in general. So I went for something very concrete. I went for bishop takes e5 with the idea that after bishop takes, um, I have knight takes d3. Um, I want, on a short note, I want to say that rook takes c5 uh, cannot be played because of bishop takes b2. But instead, um, he has to just yeah, he just takes it back. I go knight takes d3, and now we can see again this uh, kind of like small tactic with the knight attacking the bishop and the knight attacking the rook. But this is um, the position basically the position that I want to go to. Um, we should first, before we start calculating, again, have a look at the target. So uh, let's first have a look at the targets in the white camp. Um, basically, I would just say the bishop, very easy target, and the rook on c1. Um, so these are the targets, maybe the queen sometimes, it can be become vulnerable, but the rest of the pieces are quite well protected. What it has is a little camp on the king side, protecting each other, staying safe. Um, so these are the targets. And we usually when calculating, we also should look at our own targets. Um, I would definitely say, say that the D3 knight can become a target. It's so far advanced that it can easily become attacked. Um, the C7 knight is already under attack. Oh, sorry for these arrows. I didn't want to do that. And uh, another thing would be our queen. There is some pressure on the default, so very easily our queen can get removed. And uh, in this position, with all these um, targets, I was wondering if you can see the best move for white. Um, I'll actually flip the board because it's an exercise for white. Um, in this position at least. And let's try to find the best move for white. Not sure, uh, hoping, hoping that chat can find it. B4. 
Bishop c7. Yeah, so the first move that comes to mind is definitely Bishop takes e7. One of the things I forgot to do actually was highlight one more target. So the targets that I mentioned in the black M were the knight on d3. I'll highlight them. Uh, knight on c7 and the queen on d8. But there is a, a nar actually more targets in the position, definitely. Um, we should not only have a look at pieces, uh, or I mean minor pieces, queens and rook, uh, when talking about targets. Targets are also pawns. Uh, one huge target in the position is the e4 pawn. It's already under attack. It's not defended. If white, white, it, it's white move in this position, he can already attack it if he wants to. And another target is definitely the c6 pawn because it's also under attack twice. So there are some more targets in the position than I mentioned at first. Um, so a couple of moves have already been mentioned. One is bishop c7. But the problem is that, uh, okay, black is just gonna take it back. And yeah, uh, white has not won any material. Uh, soon white will protect the e4 pawn. First we need to move the rook away, let's say to c3. Save square. And now we can maybe just play f5. Just defending the e4 pawn. And now we have a very, very nice knight against a bad bishop. Because the bishop is so boxed in uh, in comparison to this very strong knight. So this is kind of the position that I want to reach. But um, what should not go for this? What already has been mentioned as well is bishop takes e4. The problem, however, is that we can just take back on e5. Or not even take back, we just take the piece. We're just up a piece now and uh, have a winning position. Uh, so not the solution either. F3 was mentioned, but ah, maybe maybe you could consider F3 in this position. Yeah. The problem is that queen e5 is coming. Uh, the queen is also undefended on c3. Or sorry, the the rook I mean is undefended on c3. And okay, if we again move away the rook, um, you're never. It's not so easy to get rid of the e4 pawns been quite well defended so the bishop is still quite bad on g2 so still we need to find the best move in this position pawn d6 well you could consider it definitely it's definitely a move um the idea is probably after the knight takes e5 you take on c7 we take back and then you take an e4 with an equal position but not really uh not really favorable for white in any way, I would say. Uh, the king's a bit exposed. So d6 is a move. The problem, there is even a bigger problem probably. You can just play knight d5. And now again, we have this double attack. White cannot even take on c7 anymore because the knight has gone away. So d6 does not solve the, the problems here. Um, somebody mentioned the square, but not the right move yet. Um, so the move, let me first get rid of the arrows so to make it a bit more clear. The move that we um, need to play in the position is a bit hidden. Um, the move is d takes c6. It's a very difficult move actually. Um, but it's making use of the undefended piece in the black camp. One of the targets in which I mentioned, uh, forgot to mention uh, in the black camp is actually the work on a8. Um, there are some ideas for white to take on b7 and then to attack the rook. So eventually the rook on a8 might even become a target. And there are some lines here. Um, the main one is if we take the take the bishop, we can take on b7, uh, grabbing another pawn. And um, the rook has to move away. And now we get to the point where we get rid of the defender of the c7 knight. We play queen take d8, followed by rook take c7. And suddenly white is up two pawns, e4 is very weak. And it's definitely a winning endgame for white. So, um, uh, d takes c6 was a big surprise for me. I, I had this position in the game, suddenly d takes c6 happened, I started to panic. Because I completely missed the move. Um, and I was in a lot of trouble. Um, 
You could also consider taking the rook, but the problem is after b takes c7, um, rook b8 again, white can take on d8, rook takes d8, and now you take on c1, after which the c7 knight is pinned, and it will be lost. You will take on b7, for example, but now you're down two bishops and a pawn against the rook. So white is completely winning in this position. Again, it has to do with um, the knight being very unstable on c7. I After d takes c6, I found the only move in the position to try and save my position. Um, let's first go to Prabhat's um, proposal. Oh, he wanted to get back at this line after f3 black makes move then f takes e3 ah okay yeah so let's first put the rook on c2 maybe it's a bit safer there um f5 you can maybe go f3 again the problem is that you're not really ever fighting for an advantage in these positions i think um because you're just trying to exchange the pieces in the position, we are trying to fight for the advantage, but the position for white is so passive that he's never fighting for an advantage here. You could, for example, just go queen e5, and you you propose something like f4, f4, rook f8, rook f8, and then some bishop f1 at some point in trying, get rid of the d3 knight. But the problem is um, queen g3, uh, for example. The, the king is so weak. Uh, if you're trying to open up things on the king side, that at some point it will become a target. So this is not really the way to go for white. Um, so instead, he played d takes c6, my opponent. And I found the only move, b takes c6, uh, trying to survive. But again, uh, there is a tactic in the position. Uh, but this time, lucky enough, my opponent missed it. So I'm gonna give you guys a little bit more time to solve this position. Um, there are again a lot of targets. Let me highlight them again. Uh, so we have the knight on c7, we have the queen on d8. Apparently also the rook on a8 is a target. And I would mention these pawns and this knight. So a lot of targets again. And we're trying to combine them in a way to solve this position. What about queen d4 instead of bishop d4? I don't think there was ever really played bishop d4 so i'm wondering which moment you mean uh such in okay bishop takes e4 is being mentioned in chat the problem again with bishop e4 is that we simply take the bishop we win a piece and no tactics in the position for white so bishop e4 is not the way to go So let's see if you come up with something else. There are a couple moves. Something which I haven't mentioned uh, so far in the stream is, or I didn't really go further into candidate moves. It's not really a stream about calculation, but um, one of the things you should do when calculating is not only highlighting the targets, it's also you should be uh, having a look at which candidate moves we have and to know which candidate moves you should be considering. Um, is always you should at first be considering checks and captures. So in every single position, the first moves to consider are the checks and captures. So in this position, we have a couple of captures. Um, one of them is queen d3, but it doesn't make any sense. Bishop g7 also doesn't make any sense. So we're left with a couple uh, others. One is bishop b4, which does make some sense. Uh, another is rook takes c6, which is mentioned in chat. And the other is bishop c7. So those are the main moves we should be considering. That it's a capture doesn't mean it's the best move, but it's definitely one of the main options. And... Um, the move I would consider here uh, at first is bishop c7, but the problem is after queen takes c7, um, everything is defended. Uh, the rook is under attack, so we need to move away the rook. And then again, we just protect e4 by playing f5. And uh, black is having a nice position here um, because the bishop on g2 is very passive and no tactics for white. 
So bishop c7 is not the answer. As you already saw, bishop e4 is also not a great move. Uh, we should have a look at the option remaining, which is rook takes c6. And this was the move that would have been almost basically a knockout uh, for me. My opponent uh, did see the move d takes c6 in this position, even though I missed it. But for some reason, after b takes c6, he failed to uh, to see rook takes c6, which is rather strange because he first saw b d takes c6, and then he misses out on um, rook takes c6. And the idea is basically that if you take with the knight on e5, um, you get rid again of the defender, queen takes d8, getting rid of the defender of the c7 knight, rook takes d8, you have to get back to queen, and then we just take on c7. We're up a pawn, and the e4 pawn is weak. Um, a5 could very easily become weak, so definitely great endgame for white. And white would have probably would have converted this if he had gone for this. Um, so, yeah, even at, the, at a higher level, these tactics get missed. And you should be trying to keep your pieces protected and not advance too far so that they do not become too weak. And um, this was the final position for today. Keep in mind to keep your pieces protected. Um, I'll probably be back on Coaches. I also uh, have my own stream uh, where you can watch me, but I'll be streaming at some point uh, for Coaches again, maybe next week. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's session. Um, do not forget to uh, subscribe to this channel if you want to keep up with all the streams. We've got going, uh, we've got a stream almost every single day with a free training session in which we try to solve some puzzles. So make sure to subscribe and um, yeah, I'll see you guys back uh, in another time.